Hello everyone, my name is Brooke and welcome to this video. Today we're talking a little bit about federated learning, which is like very fun and exciting. So before we get into federated learning, I wanted to talk a little bit about how current AI models are trained. So basically what happens here is a cloud or a device or wherever the model is being stored, stores all of the, update, the updates from the model and it also stores all of that data. Now, you're going to be like, Brooke, what's the big deal? Why does this matter? Well, let me tell you why it matters. Because if you have all that information, it's very, very uh, crucial that each part is not uh, messed with or no one tries to like get in and try to attack it in any way, because if it does, it will mess everything up. Not to mention, it has all of that very sensitive data and information. So it's crucial that we protect this. And there's a lot of issues that could come up with this as well. So you're thinking, what's the solution to this? And I know what you're thinking. Why don't we just not hold the data? Why don't we just not hold the information and be like, nah, I'm not accepting that. Well, that's where federated learning comes into play. So federated learning is basically when a bunch of devices, they train the models locally on the devices and they send the updates with uh, updated parameters, which if you're familiar with neural networks is the weights and biases to something called the server uh, global model and that global model will do something called aggregate it will take all of them it will add them up it'll do a, like some fun calculations and it will create a new model that is sent back to the devices so that's a lot to unpack okay so let's break this down a little bit and talk about the components of federated learning so federated learning as a whole is um, being able to train on data without even having the data and have a bunch of people being a part of it without anyone ever seeing your data, which is crazy to think about. So the whole idea of federated learning is being able to train models on decentralized information and not actually requiring that information to train an overall model, which is kind of crazy when you think about it, right? But it's still really cool. And there's a lot of uh, benefits with using federated learning. First and foremost, it has major benefits when it comes to privacy because you're not actually sharing that sensitive information. So for example, Apple uses federated learning for uh, unlocking the phone with your face recognition. That data, that information about the structure of your face or whatever specific features that they look for, that information never actually leaves your phone, which is crazy. So Apple doesn't actually store that information on you. Similar to the Google keyboard. Um, the recommendation system, when you're typing and it says gives you recommendations, that information, your search history, never actually leaves to and is stored by Google. Rather, it trains on your computer and those updates, those weights and biases, those updated parameters leave your computer and are given to Google. So that is actually crazy to think about it because your sensitive information and sensitive information in general never actually has to leave the, the, the device. So let's break this down even further and talk about the different types of federated learning models. For one, we have the horizontal federated learning. So this is basically when the data um, from the clients are separated in a way and are partitioned in a way and then those individual partitions are trained and the same process occurs. Then there's the vertical one which is very similar except those partitions pertain to a particular task and they're very specific and they're trained and sent in, in the same way. And uh, you have the, the uh, federated average which is basically what we're going to be talking about today. Despite there being many, many benefits when it comes to privacy um, for, with federated learning, there are still potential issues for hackers to get into the data and like poison it. Um, there's a bunch of stuff that could happen. So in order to eliminate that, there are two things that I really wanted to talk a little bit. Uh, so the first thing is to sort of um, secure the data by encrypting it. So there's different encryption methods that I'm going to go over briefly in the next little bit. But encrypting basically helps to to ensure the security of the data and that if the hacker ever tried to intercept the data being sent to the server or in any port, uh, part of the federated learning process, it would get a bunch of mumble jumble and it, would not, it wouldn't even understand it. So that is a, a definitely one way to secure the information. Another way is to secure the aggregation process. So like I briefly mentioned, the aggregation process is basically when the server model receives all those updated parameters from the devices. And then it's like, hey, I'm going to take these updates and I'm going to like do a little federated averaging and I'm going to create a new model. 
So it, just to talk a little bit about what federated averaging is, it basically takes a um, weighted average of all of the parameters that were received from the devices. So it does this by looking at how much data and information without actually looking at it was on the device and sort of assigns a weight of those uh, those uh, parameters accordingly. So that's that's kind of how federated averaging works, but that's besides the point. The aggregation process occurs. So it's important that we secure this process because it's actually the model that's created for uh, at the end of the aggregation process is the updated model that is sent to all the devices. So that's also a very crucial point. So it's important that we have secure aggregation techniques implemented when we are like going through the aggregation process. So we can do this using something called the secure multi-party computation, which is basically um, for short SUPC. And it ensures that the updates that were sent from the devices, from the clients to the central server are not fiddled with, not messed with, not touched with. So those are the types of ways I, that I really wanted to talk about that you can secure the information, you can secure the data. But now I just want to talk a little bit about how we can encrypt the data and the couple of methods that we can talk about there. We have the systematic encryption, which basically uses one key. If you're familiar, familiar with cryptography, this should be pretty straightforward to you. But if you have one key and it basically encrypts the data with that key, but also decrypts the data with that key. Now, this is a very um, efficient and effective way of encrypting the data. However, it's also a little risky, a little risque because, um, because if that key was ever found obviously you know bad things would happen it's basically like there's no point of having the encryption process because they have the key so they can decrypt it so that's not a good thing um and then you have the asystematic encryption which is when you have a cre uh, a private key and a public key so the public key just encrypts the data and then the private key which is sort of intuitive the name is pretty intuitive it's private um that decrypts the data which is obviously something that you know, you don't want to be done, so that's why you keep it private. And then finally is the homo, homo for, um, homo for kick encryption. Definitely butchered it, but that's okay. So basically, this is the most valuable way of encrypting the data. However, I would like to mention it's a little inefficient, but that's okay because it is quite effective. The data is encrypted. However, you can actually train the data while it's encrypted. You can do um, calculations on the data while it's encrypted, which is actually kind of insane when you think about it. So that is sort of what I wanted to zone in and talk a little bit about. Hey guys, so I got cut off, but that's okay because I didn't want to talk about much more here. Um, but yeah, this is the end of the video. And I know I talked, uh, said a little bit about how I'm going to talk a little bit more about home uh, encryption. Um, so that's coming out soon. It's going to be fun. And yeah, I, it's, I'm going to go over secure aggregation, but you know, that will, uh, no spoilers, it's coming out. Uh, but yeah, that's the end of this video. And I just wanted to say thank you for watching. I really appreciate it.